On August 1967, an American spy satellite flew over a secret Soviet Union base on the Caspian Sea and one of the photographs he took was very puzzling. What they saw was this, an object almost 100 meters long that looked like a plane but with suspiciously short wings, completely unlike anything the Americans had ever seen before. Their first thought was that it was a very large airplane that simply wasn't finished yet, but then, after some analysis and calculations from the aeronautics engineers, they figured there was no way something this big was ever going to fly very well. And that, added to the fact that the engines were placed in a very strange place, right up on the nose, they soon realized that they were dealing with an entirely new type of craft. They named it Caspian Sea Monster. In reality, what they had just spotted was in fact an Ekranoplan. These machines, invented by engineer Rotislav Alexeyev, were designed to fly at high speeds, skimming just over the water and for decades they were the most closely guarded secrets of the Soviet army. But first, let's go back to how and why such a machine was ever even thought to be built. After the end of World War II, the two major world players, the USA and the Soviet Union, even though allies during the war, found themselves to be rivals at the end of it. With the emergence of nuclear bombs that could vaporize whole cities in a matter of seconds, the ideological conflict between both nations and the spread of both capitalism and communism around the world gave rise to one of the biggest and most dangerous rivalries humanity had ever witnessed. As both countries tried to impose themselves as the biggest superpower at the time, while simultaneously being very careful not to overreach and cause an actual worldwide apocalypse, eventually they started developing alternative ways of showing off their superiority. Aside from the nuclear arsenal development and conventional military deployment, the struggle for dominance was expressed via indirect means such as psychological warfare, with the spread of misinformation in the respective rivals' population, propaganda campaigns to convince other countries and themselves that war was actually worth it, espionage, rivalry at sport events and technological competitions such as the famous Space Race. That is the reason the Cold War got its nickname, because no actual war ever happened. But as I said, neither country was standing still. On the Soviet Union side, there was the development of infamous weapons such as the AK-47, the Tsar Bomba and the Tu-160 Blackjack Strategic Bomber. On the American side, they presented the world with the SS-18 IBM, the F-4 Phantom II and the USS George Washington submarines, but none of this was quite as intriguing as the topic of this video. You see, the Soviet Union Navy was facing a challenge. When winter came about, the lakes and seas of the country would freeze and all the boats would get stuck for months at a time and be useless sitting ducks waiting to get bombarded. While during summer, even though they were operational, they weren't quite fast enough to be in and out of battle zones without being targeted, so they had an idea. Why not use an aerodynamic effect, known as ground effect, to add extra lift to a massive aircraft-shaped vehicle and make it fly lower than any airplane and faster than any boat? And that's exactly what they did. The Caspian Sea Monster became the biggest airplane ever built, with it being twice as heavy as any aircraft of the same era, but far more efficient and faster. It was effectively a flying ship. The vehicle could reach top speeds of nearly 700 km per hour and cruise over any flat surface such as water, ice and even land at a more modest speed of 430 km per hour, but most of all it was stealthy. The also known by then as Project 903 was capable of moving tanks and troops rapidly beneath enemy radar, capable of carrying payloads of around 50% more than an equivalent sized plane, yet using half the fuel, and with leading edge defense weapons, it was still able of completing its missions even if detected. It flew 4 meters above the surface of the water, meaning that unlike a ship, it was safe from the underwater torpedoes. And it was speculated that it would have had a deadly potential as a missile gunship defending the Soviet Caspian or the Black Seas, seeing that they have relatively calm waters. Its record for largest aircraft in the world in 1966 was only broke by Antonov N-225 Miria in 1988, eight years after the KM's destruction, but it still sits proudly in second spot till this day. 
It was first seen as a promising vehicle specialized for use by military and rescue workers, but its design caused many difficulties, from the limited location and conditions it could be operated to more specific engineering faults. For that reason, it was tested on the Caspian Sea for 15 years until 1980, but eventually was destroyed following a crash caused by a pilot error in the same year. There were no human casualties at the incident, but the KM was damaged and no attempts were made to save it, with it unfortunately being left to float before eventually sinking a week later. The Soviet Union justified this lack of interest for the rescue because they deemed it too heavy to recover, and so it has remained underwater at the crash site ever since, with no plans to build a second ever pursued. However, if I gave the impression this machine was one of a kind, that was only partially true. In fact, in the late 1980s, a second Ekrano plan was partially built, with the KM later becoming the basis of a new class of airplanes in the Soviet Union, with the same characteristics of hovering over flat surfaces. It was called the LUN class. This class of airplanes was developed by the Central Hydrofall Design Bureau in the 1980s and actually saw one example, the MD-160, enter service with the Soviet Navy and later the Russian Navy before being decommissioned in the late 1990s. And this model almost had a cousin. The second Lund class Ekranoplan was partially built in the late 1980s and while its construction was underway, it was redesigned as a mobile field hospital for rapid deployment to any ocean or coastal location. It was named the Spazatel, or in English, the Rescuer. But following the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991 and cancellation of military funding, construction of the second craft was halted. Although Lund class aeronoplanes might look similar to traditional aircraft, they are not classified as aircrafts, seaplanes, hovercraft, or even hydrofoils. Rather, these crafts are classified as maritime ships by the International Maritime Organization due to their use of the ground effect. Fun fact of the day. These aircraft became so iconic that they made multiple appearances in video games and films, with the more recent one being the 007 Bloodstone video game, where the villain also uses an ekranoplan in an effort to escape from James Bond. Later on, the ekranoplan can be seen docked and cleaned. As of 2021, the uncompleted Spazatel is stored adjacent to the Volga River in an old industrial complex in central Russia, and happily, it can even be visited seeing that it was now turned into a museum inside a hangar in the city, together with other Cold War era machinery. But this operation wasn't easy. With the first team trying to tow the 545-ton aircraft with three tugboats and two escort vessels, it managed to get it stuck just offshore of a sandy beach 100 kilometers short of the intended destination. This operation started attracting attention from the media, onlookers, and trespassing urban explorers, who were fascinated by the unusual aircraft and pushed authorities to preserve an almost national treasure. Even the factory where the Aquano Plan project was developed is still up and running. But you might wonder, what might they be producing now? Well, try and guess, they are actually building modern versions of the Caspian Sea monster, although be it much smaller and harmless. The technological legacy of the impressive machine of a bygone era is still present at the site where these exceptional aircrafts are still being produced, developed and tested at the same lake as their ancestor. Around this era of the Cold War, where the US and USSR were taking center stage, Yugoslavia was developing a $5 billion underground air base, capable of withstanding a nuclear blast. And if you want to know more about it, just press this video. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Obrigado.